Welcome back, everybody, to another game, The Stanley Parable. Now, I've seen this game played before, and I think it only lasts about an hour and a half, but it looks like stupid fun. Not a whole lot really to do, just kind of make decisions and listen to the narrator. Begin the game and see what happens. Ooh. This is the story of a man named Stanley. I'm Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Ooh, big company. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Yep, that's Orders what I do. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. Yep. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. That's how fast I type. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Yep, very happy. When you don't and know no one better. one day, something very peculiar happened. Something mm. that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Oh, no, no one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Still getting paid. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. Oh but no. As he came to his wits I can't and move. regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Stanley stood for a long time in one spot. It's part of a game. He likes to see how long he can go without dying. So far, he's doing excellent. And if he just stays right where he is, I'm sure he'll keep up that good momentum. Let's observe the genius at work. <laughs> I'm a genius because I didn't die. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a look around here. Uh, it, I don't have any hands. I, I turned up the, the, I think it was, I thought it was the mouse acceleration, but it looks like I walk pretty fast. All of his co-workers ah. were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Meeting room. Where's the meeting room? Memo? It just says, I hate Mondays. Hmm. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Who farted? But I can turn that off. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, Ooh. but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. It, it didn't advance the story, that's funny. What does that cup say? He says, I like, I just, my, I like work, hats, boss. Okay. Yeah, you shouldn't leave these filing cabinets open. That's a uh, safety hazard. Ooh, pretty picture. Can't look outside. Closet. Problem with uh, me is uh, I like to explore too much. Four two six. But not four two seven. Five. the 
around the corner. This coffee cup say, "Be my Valentine." Turn that one off. Ah, well, I can turn stuff off. Energy conscious here. This coffee cup say, "Guard it again." Popular one. Kind of vacant. It does not open. Stanley clicked on literally every single door in the office. Well, that's because yeah. Because he doesn't pick up well on cues from his environment. Doesn't pick up cues? I guess not. If you see what? Can't read the whole cup. <laughs> we'll just say F you. Username access. Ooh. Alright, so that's the username. Password. Huh. Oh, okay. Well, I think the clues are just whatever the open doors are, right? They've been working in this office. Oh, somebody spilled the coffee. That one's a I Hate Mondays, and that one is a uh, Fuel. F U E L. Okay, that's what it is. Fuel. It's a flower. Close the door. I open the door. Right. Can you tell I'm trying to stretch out the gate? Uh, let's see. Something on the board right there. Parts is statistics. What are metrics? Can we go in? Close that door. Big wide open door. A window. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Got two open doors. Which one do I go through? The one on the right? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. What? Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. No, it's the state of the right rule. Everybody knows the state of the right rule. Right? We state of the right. There's another computer I need to turn off. Ooh, look at the time. It's 12 noon. I need to clean up this hallway. A lot of empty offices. I didn't even have a number on the door. Four, five, zero. Been this way? Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yeah, I just stood here. Ooh, I gotta sneeze. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. 
A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Thank you, shoulder. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. What? Are you saying they left because of me? That one says hot stuff. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. Okay. Blueprints. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> uh. The door now. Bothers me when doors close automatically. That means I can't go back. Ooh, swipe access. A big warehouse. No jumping in this game. No jumping. Let's just say, warning. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it's in motion. Will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping, $5,000. Oh, okay. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Oops. So, I wasn't supposed to do that? Oh, I'm back in my cubicle! Ah! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I gotta get back to that area. When Stanley came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. <laughs> Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Really? There's someone you've been neglecting, Stan. Can I jump down there? Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Her? Her who? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. See? 
I wonder if I can jump to that platform as I go across. Probably not. Tempted to try it. Who? Is she? We're close. That looks like uh, behind the scenes of, uh, whoa, that, that's a dark door. Behind the scenes of, uh, um, portal. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another. Oh, no, 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 you can't. Did you just unplug the phone? Now that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Oh, Let whoop. me double check. <laughs> no, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. No! Oh, Choice. Sorry. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. Yeah, for yeah, example, yeah. in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. What? What's a back sack and crack? Practice. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Infield exercise. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago. We and are? see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. 